poor dog. All right, look, running the club's a complicated business, um, and at times there's some difficult decisions we have to make um, to make things as fair and equitable as possible for the members. In dealing with these things, we've established a club handbook. Um, now, the handbook itself is uh, it's a living document which outlines our policies and processes. So basically, when we have an issue, what we try to do is review it, how it was dealt with, and develop a process of how it should be dealt with in the future. And then we include it in the handbook. So it's readily available from our club website. Our club website's gonna be changing a fair bit over the next few months. Um, Nick Hansen's actually doing a fair bit of work on that and social media. Look, I'm not gonna bore you too much with, uh, with club policy matters because it gets a bit gruesome, boring. So we'll move on with it, but I mean, we'll just highlight a couple of things that comes up fairly regularly for us. Um, things like the FA Code of Conduct and Ethics. Um, obviously, we're all governed by everything to do with Football Australia, so their Code of Conduct, as soon as you register within the club, you and your parents are subjected to that. So that includes your sideline behaviour, it includes how we deal with things with the media and all sorts of things. So, look, there's a... There's things in place there to provide some protections, and if you need to, if you want to get access to it, you need to go to our handbook, or if you've got a pen, just quickly write down that email address, or that website address, and you'll be in business, all right? But it's readily available from our website anyhow, in case you need to see it. Uh, that has been updated as of this year, okay? Shin pads, the bane of my existence. Um, players must wear shin pads in any activity where combat occurs. That's when we're kicking each other. Now, I've shown up at a couple of sessions this year already, and there are players who forget or have lost their shin pads. Um, so from now on, you won't be participating in the team training sessions, all right? Instead, what you'll do, you'll be completing a running program that we've had developed. So when you come into training and we say, put your shin pads on and you oh, I forgot them, well, you won't be training with the team, you'll actually go and do the running program instead. Um, the matter is, the fact of the matter is, if you were to play a game, you wouldn't be able to play anyway. So make sure you've got shin pads with you. Is that fair enough? Don't forget them. Don't lose them. Don't not wear them. Because I come around and just check, and the coaches will be doing more so now as well, okay? So it's important we train like we play. I think that's very important for us. Um, Okay, participation. Look, it's reasonable to assume for parents that um, you have an understanding of what your minimum playing expectations are going to be of match time. Look, generally speaking, all players and identified player squads uh, will play approximately 65% on field, all right, of playing time as our minimum expectation. Obviously, that differs with goalkeepers. If you've only got one goalkeeper on your side, you'd expect he's going to play a few more, he's going to play more than that. Otherwise, you can't play without a goalkeeper. So if we were two goalkeepers, that the goalkeepers, unfortunately, would be reduced to a maximum of 50%. All right? This doesn't include times when you're injured or ill. We, we can't make that time up. That just happens, unfortunately. But in our allocated times, you'll pay 65% of them. Obviously, this may be affected by other anticipated expectations. Uh, if you get sent off, for example, that's going to affect your, your on-game time, is it not? But we're not going to get sent off this year, are we? So we're going to be good little players. All right. Um, training attendances will also dictate uh, your participation. You know, we're expected to train three nights a week. If you expect to play on the weekend, you better get there for three nights a week training. All right. Look, specifics of this are handled in the um, in the club handbook. So if you want to refer to that. Uh, and if you need any clarification, you can contact me at any stage. Right. Squad sizes, just so that everyone's aware. Look, generally um, our NPL squads under 13s, we generally only have 16 players. It's been noted though in the last few years because of uh, the likelihood of injuries occurring um, and the load being significantly increased on players and your body's breaking down. Um, that we increase our squad numbers where necessary from under 14s to under 18s, from 16 to 18 players. Some squads at the moment have got 16 players and they're still searching for two. Some, players, some squads have got 17, they're still wanting another one. And the reason for that is this, you know, last year's a good example. Our under 18s last season had 18, an 18-man 18 squad. Um, 
there was only one, we, we can actually only put 16 players on a team sheet every week, so two players have to miss out. But the under 18s last year, we only had one game where we actually had to make that decision because we've had injuries all the way through. For most of the season, we probably only had 14 or 15 players available every week as a consequence of the loads that get put on. It's even worse in the second term of, the, uh, second term of school because in the second term of school, school football kicks in, the load on players physically gets extremely hard and injuries become more. So generally speaking, most of the teams find that they have two to three players injured every week as a consequence. That's why we need the extra numbers. Also, it, de it develops competition for places. So players earn the right to play uh, through performance and attendance. Again, get to training. If you don't want to be at training, that's your choice. But we have to be there three nights a week, okay? Our player injury management. Um, obviously, we assume the duty of care once the player actually enters the change rooms on the weekend games. Once they get on the park for training, um, coaches and managers uh, and gardens, just be aware, we can't issue any medications to players on your behalf. Uh, so if you need um, Panadol or something, our, our coaches and managers won't be able to, to actually prescribe that for you. That's got to come from your parents. Um, or a doctor, someone of a medical profession. Um, at least not without consent. Where players are seriously injured, we'll call an ambulance, should an ambulance be called. We also have backup support by having sports trainers or our physio at the ground whenever we play games. That's also part of our football compliance as well. We have to provide a physiotherapist or a, or a level two sports trainer to deal with injuries as they occur. But any serious injuries, the ambulance will be called in. Um, going to define a, uh, the definition of a serious injury is one where players cannot compete, complete either games or training. If you can't complete games or training, you're going to need to go and see the physio. Is that right? Just so we're clear. Now, player treatment. Obviously, we try, we've tried to provide some additional servicing for you with regards to our physiotherapist. Um, on Monday evenings, our physio comes in. He runs a triage assessment for us on Monday nights. So if you've had an injury from the weekend and you need the injury looked at, 90% of the injuries that we get that the physio looks at might just be concussionary incidents where you've actually had a clash with players. Okay, so he will have a look at you and see where you're at. Now, if you need additional treatment, he'll recommend that, whether that be through himself or whether that go to your own physiotherapist, that's up to yourself, all right? If you do go to your own physiotherapist, we need updates on where you're at and where your physio thinks you're at. But we will still get you assessed before you get back onto the training park through our own physio. So on Thursday nights, he's also available because he works with our senior sides on the uh, Thursday night also. Again, coaches and team managers have been instructed not to permit players who have been injured to return to training without a written clearance, especially from an external physiotherapist or, or medical uh, officer. We had so many players last year who, who couldn't train Monday and Tuesday, but they thought if they came back on Thursday night, they'd be available to play. And oh, my physio said I'm okay. Well. Coaches and managers have been instructed, if we don't have written confirmation of that, then you're still injured. Even if you are cleared by the Thursday, you still may not play on the weekend. Because that clearance is only clearing you to come back to train. Because you've got to train three nights a week. All right, so you'd be used sparingly if that be the case. Is that clear? So you're aware? Clear as mud? Cool bananas. Uh, the club does have a member protection officer. For those of you who don't know what a, an MPIO is, um, the MPIO is someone that actually helps in incidences where we might have uh, a case of bullying or we might have um, uh, a case of uh, suspected abuse or anything along those lines where the member of the club might need some additional um, assistance in how it should be dealt with. Um, we only have to ever call upon him at least once, maybe once or twice a year if we're lucky. And I'm glad to say that we've been very, very fortunate in the last couple of years where we haven't had too many injuries because we've tried, too, too many incidents I should say, because we've tried very much in, in situations like this to make you aware of what the expectations and everything are, okay? So, uh, but that is available in case anyone does need it so that um, we can push on.